Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Remember my lie? The primary thrust of the defense of Lt. William Calley, who was the only soldier in the trial of 26 that was convicted, was the age-old military get-out-of-jail-free tactic. I was only following orders which in today's modern legal system no longer holds water. Adolf Eichmann, tried in Israel for crimes against the Jewish people and humanity during the German Nazi Holocaust and was subsequently hung for his crimes, said, I had orders. Whether people were killed or not, orders had to be executed. Hannah Arendt, who wrote The Banality of Evil after attending Eichmann's trial in Jerusalem, suggested that the root of evil was the inability to think. Following orders was therefore an excuse for evil action, when the evil action had not even been subjected to thought. If, as I suggested before, the ability to tell right from wrong should turn out to have anything to do with the ability to think, then we must be able to demand its exercise from every sane person, no matter how erudite or ignorant, intelligent or stupid, he may happen to be. Following orders in the aforementioned military examples carries a heightened intensity due to the context of their individual situations. In my lie, hundreds of civilian Vietnamese were senselessly murdered. In Eichmann's Nazi stupor, untold millions died due to his loyalty to Adolf Hitler. According to Eichmann, he took no personal responsibility. These events in history, as well as many similar events lost to time, illustrate the results of Arendt's lack of thinking. But, are the results of such banality of character always direct and obvious? Eichmann claims he never killed a single person. Kali, of course, was directly involved with the murder of his victims, and probably driven temporarily insane by the fervor of the moment. But, what about how Rent's banality of evil shows up in everyday life? What of the blindness to evil we experience every day, with ordinary people, ordinary people who are simply following the orders of society, of government leaders, of public health officials, and of the AMA or the CTC? So do the physicians. They were following orders. Medical practitioners are merely soldiers in an army with a military-style command, the standard of care as dictated by the AMA, the CDC, the NAID, and the FDA, in the United States. Doctors do not have the time to rely on their own research, their own consciousness, or their own critical thinking. As Arendt would probably suggest, they are incapable of critical thinking, and just carry on with their craft as dictated by the higher authority they are loyal to. If you have ever known a maverick doctor who does not have this sort of blind acquiescence to a higher corporate, authoritarian power, you will see an example of a person who indeed does think. I've known a few such doctors, few of them are still practicing medicine. But what of ordinary people? I have seen client after client in my practice who are ordinary people. Most of the ones I will use here as examples are professional and financially successful people with a solid place in society. They could be doctors, lawyers, dentists, business owners, teachers, accountants, or any of a variety of positions and occupations considered culturally mainstream. These people are what we typically call law-abiding. They understand, believe in, and respect what society calls for to maintain an upstanding position in the community. Everything works well in their world, they are complimented for their adherence to the status quo. None of them want to be labeled troublemaker or radical. They follow the laws, wear seatbelts, go the speed limit, pay their taxes, and certainly, they do not steal, rob, kill, rape, take illegal drugs, or participate in any sort of grossly illegal and thus evil activities. Who tells them what these laws and limitations are? The government does, of course. The lawmakers in Congress or Parliament. Duly elected individuals whom they trust. And the ordinary law-abiding upstanding citizens follow their orders. It is what we are all supposed to do. Not only for our own protection, but for the protection of others, our fellow citizens. They do not question. They do not think. And if their adherence to the laws of the land causes destruction, loss of life or liberties, they do not care. 
I had orders. Whether people were killed or not, orders had to be executed. The most common behavior is to not correlate their unthinking obedience with any negative result. The agenda makes great effort to keep this dot connecting from taking place, with censorship, punishment to whistleblowers, and the like. But I suspect, even if the order followers knew, they would excuse it and rationalize their behavior in some way. We are a society, we have to stay coherent and together. We can't sustain a culture without laws and authority, so they think. Who was it who said, if a law is unjust, it is our duty to disobey it. And I am not even talking about breaking laws. Nothing we have faced over the past few years that has infringed on our rights and freedoms have been laws. But people generally did nothing. To be upstanding you do nothing, you don't complain, you don't make waves, and you don't think. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Since early school years, we have been taught that being a rebel is a bad thing. So, no one wishes to be one of those malcontent high school kids who skipped class and smoked in the bathroom, at least not the upstanding kids wanted that, the honor roll kids, the ones poised to be beneficial members of the community. It is ironic that nearly every great societal accomplishment in history has been born out of revolution. Both governmentally as well as in science, art and literature. Progress has always been revolutionary. And yet we have been indoctrinated to abhor moving contrary to the status quo. We have been brainwashed that following orders is the norm and the way of the good citizen. It makes no matter if our actions or inactions end up hurting or killing people. As Eichmann said, orders had to be executed. His following orders defense did not work for him though. He was hung for it. Nearly every great societal feat Born from revolution fires heat Progress always breaking through Yet we're taught to fear the new Indoctrinated to stay in line Status quo our guiding sign Brainwashed to obey conform Good citizen our set norm Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Break the chains, plant the seed. Societies change, born anew, in every heart, a fire true.